Hi, lovers. Welcome to episode two of the Lentorious podcast. I am giggling right now and holding a point set up because um, it's today is December 24th. So happy Christmas Eve if you celebrate. If you don't celebrate, um, happy Chinese food day. But I'm sitting next to a window because I'm trying to find my natural light because there's no cool lighting in here because Joe's not here. So I don't know. Is it working? Anyhow, welcome to episode two. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I genuinely sincerely wholeheartedly deeply appreciate you for spending time with me i know time is very very valuable so thank you for giving me a piece of your time um on episode two we have jalen white who is uh co-hosting with me he's so brilliant so bright smart funny cute adorable you're gonna love spending time with him too um and we have a special guest sally mullins who is everybody's friend she's like everybody's best friend so you're gonna enjoy it Thank you so much and happy holidays. Welcome back to episode two of the Lynn Torius podcast with my special guest co-host, Jalen White. Yes. Okay, so you're all, if you're watching this, you're wondering why Jalen White still looks drunk. It's because he is. <laughs> I am. <laughs> because I absolutely we, am. I am. Because <laughs> we just did a kick-ass sold-out show. At yes. the Ice House, at the Ice House in Pasadena. Yes. We just did a kick ass sold out show and Jalen hosted. Yes. Which means he had to be on. Yes. The whole time. The whole time. You had to pay attention to every comic. I enjoyed myself. I started off irritated. You did? Yeah. Why? And then I, because all my people were late. <laughs> <laughs> all my people were late and, they were late and it, the sad part is we all live in pasadena <laughs> so that's why you were late so the the light man the dj the guy sound guy he was like you got one minute i said give me two wow and then he he literally gave me two minutes and then i got up and i was like we're gonna we're gonna do it and yeah. then you told me have fun yeah so we had fun we had fun we have Cause, fucking cause, fun. And he did say that to me, too. He was like, oh, thank God you said that because I was irritated. But you know what? I did say that to you. you I did was say like, that. I was livid. But, but were, you already, <laughs> were you already buzzed before you went up? Because we had our free Casamigos. We had, we had our, our free, free tequila. They had a tasting. Uh-huh. Um, buzzed is subjective. <laughs> 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 what is buzzed for you? <laughs> so were you already, you're, you know... You already took the edge off. You were kind yeah. of loose. You were having yeah, fun. Yeah, we were going to do it okay. either way. I just okay. wanted my black people to be in the audience. But they came in time. <laughs> they, they came, came they in came. time. They came when Jalen was already on stage. But I'm telling you all this to say this is why Mr. Jalen, he walked in here. I looked at him and he said, I look like death. <laughs> I died a few times last night. But he's so, <laughs> but Jalen is so professional. Thank you. That when he didn't respond to me this morning after i texted him well, like five times also text me at eight o'clock in the morning <laughs> when he didn't respond when i asked him if you do you have allergies do you have snack preferences and all that stuff i was like okay either he's hung over or he got into an accident and he's in the hospital somewhere because there's no way and i'm not famous enough to have a writer <laughs> <laughs> like i'm not famous enough to be like i only eat the green m m's <laughs> like not yet. No, we're not there yet we're not there yet so i'm not allergic to anything right but fuck men but that's neither here nor there <laughs> but i'm glad you're here jaylen happy to be I'm here i'm glad you're here um you're one of the rising stars in stand up he really is he's one of the new stars rising stars and right. you know what i love i love when i can see a gem when i can spot talent and the first time, because Jalen and I followed each other on Instagram. I don't think I ever saw your set, but I saw his set one time on the D's Nuts show with Word. Vargas Mason and Sally Mullins. The first time ever um, you did a set and you were talking about ugly babies. <laughs> 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 he had he was so funny I love and 
I was like, you know what? And then when I needed a comic, I was looking for a gay male comic for my Ice House show. Jalen's like, oh, I live in Pasadena and it's my birthday weekend and all that. I was like, he's perfect. Yeah. You're perfect for it. So I, I saw you first. I'm just, that's my whole point. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I love that so much. I honestly, and it makes sense because you were the first person to book me. No way. At the Comedy Chateau. Was I really? Yeah. But you didn't sit in the room when I did the Sunday um, audition. audition. Uh -huh. And so Irina was in the room. Yeah. And then you at the end were like, yeah, we're going to book you. And you got my number and everything like that and then set it up. And then I came and did a show. And then I saw you perform and I was like, she's funny as fuck. Really? Yeah. I don't remember booking then, you. That's cra I'm sorry, crazy. I'm sorry, Jalen. No, I, it's it's okay. <laughs> this was like a year or so ago. No, two years ago? Two, yeah. Okay, it that's been, how we it met It probably other. was even pre-pandemic, maybe. Yeah. Um, okay. Maybe. Um, but other than that, I've watched you and I've been like a silent fan, you Aww. know, from the side. Yeah. And then we were able to perform at the comedy store together. Yeah. And that was such a great moment. And then so when you said you needed a gay comic, well, I'm a raging homosexual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. yes. so I was grateful for that point. And then I just feel like the bond that you and I have been nurturing. Yeah. It's super special super to me. Super special. Yeah. And it just naturally happened. Yeah. It's just naturally, organic. naturally happened. What do you think? So my question is, what do you do you think that in show business, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that being a star is something that's meant to be? Or do you think someone can work towards it? Do you think that that's like God given like destiny? Or a little bit of both. Okay. Because I, I do believe that it's God given, but I feel like you have to show up and do your part in that mm. as well. I think that a lot of people are able to proclaim being a star. Mm -hmm. And then so they can like put all that extra effort and then they become the result of that, right? Mm -hmm. But they lack like that that talent, the je ne sais quoi. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The, just, the charisma. Yeah, like yeah. they lack it, but they can sell out shows. And we see that in being yeah. in the clubs and be those white boys that get up. Oh, God. You know what I mean? That, <laughs> <laughs> Joe. There's one Joe. here today. <laughs> He's not that, a stand up though, but he looked that, up when we said white boy. <laughs> but that they can fill seats, you know what yeah. I mean? And they can constantly sell out and so they're a booker's dream yeah. and it'll make you feel like, Well, do I have it? Right, right, right. You know, so I, I believe a little bit of both. Right. Yeah. I think the true test is longevity. Yeah. I think longevity is a true test because anybody can blow up, mm -hmm. you know, like for a year or two or whatever but longevity see where it is where yeah. we are where we're at in the long run what i noticed too working with comics and just being in this world is that there's comics who are willing to do whatever it takes yeah correct so for example like with jaylen i said jaylen you want to go to new orleans do you want to go to um, new york and you have to be willing to do it on your own dime yeah. in the beginning when someone's not throwing a tour at you yet yeah because that will come. Yeah. But if you want to get out there, then you have to take those that I don't want I don't like the word sacrifice, but what is yeah. that? What is a word for it? Like you got to I mean, what was humbling about that for me was I've never been on an airplane before. You've never been on an I've airplane? I've never been on an airplane. I've never been further than Las Vegas and Arizona. So for me, this is special because it's like I'm going to get to go do some dope shit. Yeah. After getting on an airplane for the first time, you I get to go do stand up. Going to New York is going to be your first, or New Orleans is going to yeah. be your first time on an airplane. Congratulations! Look at you. So should I fly Spirit? <laughs> <laughs> I flown Spirit. Shit. If it's like uh, I was looking at the prices, listen, I might have to listen. But they do charge you for everything. You you'll get a hundred dollar ticket, and then it's like fifty dollars for the bag, and then. They charge you for water. and It's like a whole deal. Oh. So. No, I need free water. <laughs> <laughs> I do need free water. <laughs> Southwest. Southwest gives you free. Southwest is great. American Airlines, Alaska, Delta. Southwest, the free bags. Southwest so anything but bag. spirit. I can't believe you've never been. I can't, this is so special, Jalen. That's, that's amazing. Why, that's why I've, I've always adamant about being like, I'm so grateful yeah. that you are interacting with me in this capacity. Like, it does mean something special. And to feel seen. Yeah. And then you being a person of color as well. Yes. Like, makes it ultra fucking special. Yes. You know. Because we be doing shows together and I'll be like, 
we need at least one white person on we, need, show. we need it just to just for anybody who is interested in that i we love need, last night when you were like our audience does not like, like white, white people. people because they were struggling to like say I'm sorry. something not, say something no, no. about it <laughs> you might have to cut this part out i don't know but no 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 honestly and, and i'm not saying that they weren't good comics i'm just saying that everybody has their audience I've, absolutely right. like because i you think can be, they yeah. were um all interestingly special in their own way yes and i think that there is an audience specific for everybody mm -hmm. um but you know when you are a person of color specifically like your audience they are looking for some loud live and in color type of energy right and so like sometimes people are a little bit too uh smart i yeah. think comedians are too smart for certain audiences yeah. or or they do a lot of the work for the audience mm. you know what i mean like our last show when you were like these people are smart so fucking smart you know what i mean our audience last night was smart too yeah because they were brutal because when it wasn't funny they just stayed silent, silent. not one of them gave me a pity laugh or nothing because i had a joke but you earned it like you literally were like in seeing you several times like i can say last night you were on i was on because i had like three drinks before i went up there and i literally was like um i am drunk right now and i don't know what's coming out of my mouth i knew what was going to come out of my mouth but i'm like i'm just going to go for whatever but my point is when i did say a joke i said um oh when i'm not feminine and i'm the manly comedian lynn uh men want to compare dick sizes with me and i didn't get one laugh not I one laugh it because I know she one. has big dick energy. <laughs> <laughs> but not one laugh. I was like, these motherfuckers yeah. are brutal. But I enjoy that. I like it when audiences are honest. I don't like the easy laughs, you know? Yeah, because yeah. you got to work for it. You got to work for it. You got to work for it. Because yeah. comedy is fucking hard. Yeah. yeah. It's not easy. That's why I enjoy hosting because it's like you want to be funny on the top end, but it's also really not about you. And then you also have to find balance and not being an asshole between uh, comics because it's so easy. You'll see you see this in watching shows like the host will tell their own set mm -hmm. in between oh. people's <laughs> shit. And I'm yeah. like, that's such an asshole move. And it is some, so show, some shows allow that. Yeah. Maybe like a chocolate Sundays or something. They like that. I don't like that. I think you are a fucking douchebag. I do think you are self-centered if you do that. I try to find something in your set and then yeah. be like, I'm going to A-man that. I'm yeah. going to tag that. So, and then at the very least, if people find me funny and that it's on the back of your shit, so they find you as the right. comic as being a success or being funny. You you're, know what I mean? You're a selfless host. You don't make it about yourself. What I did try. you say yesterday? Because he said, um, if you're offended, what do you say about that? Oh, <laughs> I said, if you're offended, if you find yourself offended, pray about it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Said, pray about it. <laughs> I don't. It's so true, though. It's yeah. so true. But you've seen my set several times now. So, you know, I used to be a sex worker. Yes. So what do you think? What do you think of sex workers? What is your take on that? Well, I think that sex work is work <laughs> and, and true work. And don't judge me because I'm saying this with red <laughs> eyes. I was out all night. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you been a sex worker? I've done sex no. work. <laughs> Am I a worker? <laughs> you Wait, know. So have you made money? Yes. You have? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I've, I, you know, I've done some things. Hell yeah. I've hustled. Absolutely. In California? Yeah. In LA? I told you I ain't been further than Arizona and the <laughs> kiss. I did not know this. No wonder we get along so yeah. well. Me, you, and Sally. No, yeah, I'm a hustler. That's <laughs> okay, Sally. Wait. That's comedy mom. That's com. That's Sally's the best. But okay, yeah. so you've done sex work, uh, more than a hand job. <laughs> nice. <laughs> How much do you make? Listen, at one point in time, I'll give you a range. Yeah. From 2016 to th 2019, I had a sugar daddy, <gasps> and weekly. I made upwards to like twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars. This motherfucker said weekly. And, weekly? And I really didn't do much but like spin around and let him slap my lower back because I don't have an ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I mean It was all the same. <laughs> <laughs> it all goes together. <laughs> But I would let him slap it. I would sit on his lap. I would entertain him. I would go out on dates. He would send a car for me. How old was he? He was mid-40s. He wow, owned... he wasn't even old. 
old? He owned, uh, did we already acknowledge where I'm from? We did. Where are you from? Say it again. Pasadena. Oh, okay. No, we didn't acknowledge. I don't know, did well, we? Well, now, well, it's the patrol. But wait, I know I should have asked this before, but I guess we, it's out owns. here. Does anybody else know about this? Your mom? Who else? Yeah, well, everybody no, listening yeah, yeah. to this? Okay. My cause... mom's a real bitch. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, but really. <laughs> She's wow. a therapist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she is. <laughs> you know. Wait, okay. So you 12,000 a week? 1200 oh 12 1200 a week so when i make a joke about you know every time you touch a dick you can make 300 dollars, he's probably like that's it <laughs> yeah no because i mean i mean well concerning that man is like what dick <laughs> <laughs> where is it at so when you had the sugar daddy were you able did he let you do other work did he let you see other men yeah he was very so much like he wanted a relationship his first words were um if you want to be in a relationship with me it would be very lucrative for you and i'm a boy from the hood so the word lucrative mm -hmm. that's a great word that's a great word <laughs> that's a great, that word. Is a great word it's like there's like equity on that's the back of that word selling point. that is <laughs> yeah so i said lucrative <laughs> were you attracted to him no at, not at all no was he white black Asian? he was white so you that was attracted to him at all find a white man that i like no you so like no. an Asian. Because ah, his new, his boo is, yeah, his boo I, is I, Asian. Yeah, I'm with Jackie Chan now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so so you have the sugar daddy, but was that it? Or did you do other things too? Um, I've done other things in between where it's just, you know, like a little quick lay down, a quick like, you know. Where do you advertise? Or did you advertise? Um, I wasn't advertising. Huh. I, I like was allowing it to be organic and in the wake of it being organic like me meeting people and being out it's just like okay well if I do that what do you have going on you're older than me okay you know that was largely I would um look for older guys okay so it's just like you needed to be upwards of at the time like 40 and up because they had money so I thought most of the time you sniff them out the ones yeah. with money nice yeah because Fun fact, in WeHo, there's a bar named Trunks. Okay. And that's like the starter bar for WeHo. Mm -hmm. And at one point in time, that was where all the older guys would go. Uh-huh. And so you could meet like an older little sugar daddy in that space and get your bills paid huh. if you're that girl. Joe, did you know this life? No. <laughs> Joe did not know. He's we crossing his legs. Know. He's lived this life. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Jalen. Yeah. That is amazing. Good for you. Thank you, you know what that is so it is so powerful yeah it is so powerful to talk about it to own it to do it to because what there's nothing wrong with it it's two consenting adults who yeah. cares i think people associate so much shame with sex work but i think for some people that is what they have to do for the moment that they do it of and course. so to be dehumanized yeah or or made to feel less about it is bullshit because ultimately is. you have to do what you have to do. And if you can do it with some type of agency and autonomy, then at the very least, you'll feel empowered when you walk away by it. Because you're like, I did this because I had to. Mm -hmm. Like, you didn't just get off on me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I had to do this. I chose to do this. Mm -hmm. And then I got paid. I got paid. Listen, I've sucked a lot of dick for free. <laughs> talent <laughs> <laughs> experience baby <laughs> wow that is or i mean meeting them organically and everything some people like me had to advertise i was on craigslist were you on back page no i never was never on back page but i did la weekly word mm -hmm. what was, was your LA advertisement week? the title was sweet sexy curvy asian <laughs> That I was, was my so time. Afraid the fans were going to come. I, I was afraid to <laughs> post fit. something. I know that's. I got busted. How many times? Did I? I got busted three times. Oh. Yes. I just don't have all the time in the world to say that on. But I got busted three times. Anyways. She only talks about one time. She is a criminal. I am a criminal. <laughs> but that is amazing, Jalen. Yeah. Honestly, and do you no, still do it not now? anymore? Okay. Like I literally like my sugar daddy was the last wave of that because it was like. Oh, I can kind of date a man and get paid for it. Yeah. I don't have to do this shit anymore. And then he became openly gay and okay. fell in love and I had to Aww. let him go. But I would still be playing that card. Would you? <laughs> yeah. Would you still be doing it now if you didn't have a boyfriend? Yeah, because uh, yeah, he made he made it easy for me. Like he was a, I was able to create a relationship that didn't have to be sexualized. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was just sometimes it was just a matter of going to dinner 
or letting him kiss me or letting him slap my lower back. For 1200 a week? Yeah, I didn't have to fuck all the time. I got, I listen, I'll scroll through my phone and send it to you. I got pictures where I would take a picture of his white ass at the ATM. At the ATM? At the ATM. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you know about the... Um, Ladies or gentlemen, if you're listening to this, you know about the website uh, SeekingArrangements.com. I was on SeekingArrangements.com. I was Cindy, 29 years old. Why but um, is... I was only like 30. I, what? How old was I then? Like, No, I was Cindy like 27 years old. I met a lawyer. Um, He was like, oh, yeah, let's do it. But he just got out of a divorce and then he got scared and didn't. I was going to play that, but I just that's not in my cards. I'm not a good sugar baby. I am because I don't really want you like that. <laughs> I'm a terrible sugar because to be a sugar baby, there's has to be a certain a, sl a certain amount of being submissive, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and and you also have to have a bit of parental trauma oh. to really get with it. Like you know, you, you do have to have a daddy issue. I do have a daddy issue. Well, you're not expressing it right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm expressing it in a very masculine way. You gotta let it out. Wow. I'm like, my daddy didn't want me. I didn't want this man. Wow. You know, but he's here. He's showing up. Let me he be quiet. Up. Let me shh. shh. No, when I see an older man, I want to <laughs> punch him in the face. Because he reminds me of my dad. So I want to kick him in the nuts. When I look at an older man, I'm like, my daddy wasn't shit. What are you going to do for me? <laughs> <laughs> he knows how to work his shit. You know you're cute, too. He knows he's cute. It's red eyes. I wasn't doing, <laughs> I wasn't doing sex work last night, but I was out. <laughs> I do know where I can go make money and stand. Um, speaking of sex work, no kidding. What do we What do we feel right now about uh, Britney Spears? She is still the girl that I want to be when I, I grow love up. Britney Spears. <laughs> She's not Britney a sex alone. worker, obviously, but I love her so much. I don't know what it is. I'm drawn to her. I don't know what it is. She's such a good performer. She is. I, I think a lot of what people don't realize that they see when they look at her, they see a, a constant professional. Like, I think that people sometimes take all of Britney's drama or controversy and they like blur the lines of the fact like this bitch was getting up there fucking eight count. I don't know how many <laughs> steps she was doing, but mm -hmm. it was intentional. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. she's a professional. Her performances, she's never had a performance where, like, oh, my God, Brittany. I know. Like, you know what I mean? And the fact that she's been consistent in what she's given. She's given a lot of great pop music, as well as a lot of great live performances. Mm -hmm. Like, she paved a whole lane yeah. for herself, like, where she does represent pop in a large way, the same way Kylie, what's her name, Kylie? No. Nope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, in the same way, like, Britney has paved a lane. Like, there is Brandy, there's Beyonce, mm -hmm. there's Janet, there's Britney. There's Britney. And she never hurt it's nobody. Britney, bitch. Britney never, she never bothered nobody. She never, never like, dragged anybody until now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it's time, it's time because her time. family has been awful. Oh, God, her I can't look at Justin Timberlake the same. Like, why am I so connected to you, Britney? Like, I can't look at him the same. I look at him and I'm like, what the fuck, bro? Honestly... I probably would be a few abortions down fucking with Justin myself. So, like, that was not surprising to me. But I was just like, damn. But you know what? Because he looks like a fuckboy right now. Right now. But you know what? The thing is, too, I, I will say that my logical self was like, but you know what? There's more than just Justin in her life at that time. She was 19. You know, what did her mom say? What did her dad say? What did her manager say? Her agents and all that stuff. I, I don't think it was just Justin. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because... What would you? Yeah, she had it hard. And then what was that man that she had babies by? Was Kevin it Kevin Federline? Terrible. I, I would have never. Why? <laughs> I would have never. She said he was a. Was he a dancer? She said he thought he was a rapper. How cute! <laughs> oh, bless his heart. You see, I tried to give him another craft. <laughs> I tried to do him a favor. No, he was her backup dancer. He was her backup dancer, and then he became a rapper, and she tried to help him with that career, and it fucking flopped because white men can jump. <laughs> um, maybe not rapper. Dan. You ain't Eminem. Maybe you, you, He's Kevin not even Federer. Vanilla Ice. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> but damn it, Britney! And then this new this this, this recent book. no this recent divorce she had. What's his name? I don't even. It it was so quick. It was so quick. But I knew that shit wasn't gonna last. He was a Spanish man. I don't know what 
But I was like, what's we'll call him that Hector. Shit. For, Hector? <laughs> we'll call him Hector for the sake of this interview. <laughs> she needed to leave Hector alone. She needed to leave Hector alone. I'm glad he got nothing out of that shit. He shouldn't have. He shouldn't have got out of that one month marriage or whatever it was. That's Come what I'm saying. It was so here. quick. Like, Stop getting married. I do love to watch her dance with knives and do that shit Me online. Too. I'm just like, what is that that she's doing? Is it cultural? She's white. <laughs> you know, it's the culture <laughs> I like how everybody blows it out of proportion, too. She's just dancing with fake knives. She even put it in her caption. These are fake. And, and everyone's like... she has to say that. <laughs> fake knives. I mean, how many people you know are dancing with knives? Dahmer's dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lord, but I love you, though, Brittany. I, I, love I can't you too, wait Brittany. for your comeback. Like, it's Brittany, bitch. It is. Like, I love her I'm so much. I'm trying to go. Like, if there is a concert that's local... We going. I'm going. We going to Britney's concert. And I'm going to bring my fake knife. Listen, I don't even care if she's a fucking disaster in the concert. She can shave her head in front of us. (laughs) (laughs) She can shave her head. I'm waving that knife in the air. (laughs) Slay. It's like Britney shaved her head. I'm going to shave mine. Like, that's how I feel. She's always done it for me in her own way. Yeah. Like, I support her everything that she's doing and I like that she's telling the truth about her experience yeah. working in the industry dating and then also her parents like I, I like that she's um, being honest about how she was treated mm-hmm. and her mental health in relation to all of those things I, I think that it's important to share because I think people have dehumanized her so much yeah. you know I, I, did you get the book I'm gonna buy it I'm gonna buy that book I'm reading that shit cover to cover I am I also want to read Mariah's too Mariah's coming out with a book too? I think she already had, like, recently, like, had one. Mariah? Yeah. I love Mariah. I love when people say people's first names. Like, 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 that's how we know. We love Mariah. (laughs) Brittany? Yes. (laughs) We love both crazy divas. We love the crazy divas. We do. Um, We said 20. Okay, but let's play, let's pay, we have to pay tribute really quick to um, Matthew Perry. We have to. We have to. Um, I loved Friends. How many loved, of us have them? I loved Friends. <laughs> I loved Friends. Did you like Friends, or do you thought you thought it was too white? Um, it was the spinoff of Living Single with Queen you Latifah. So? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that it was a white version of Living Single mm. with with white men. But I'll say this: Matthew Perry was. Um, an intentional actor yeah. like you can definitely feel the fact that he was very consistent in the way that he treated people mm-hmm. and and we saw that come through the screen yeah. and I thought that um, he seemed to be like a really great human being and he, he really impacted a lot of people's lives and it's sad and it's really unfortunate that he passed away in the way that he did yeah. you know what I mean Yeah, I, I, I can say that when I saw that news I was genuinely sad yeah like I was, I, I was sad. I was like, "Wow, what a loss!" Yeah, you know, like, but we love you, Matthew Perry, Matthew Perry fans, everybody yeah. watching. Um, we just, we love you, Matthew Perry, and we love Friends. <laughs> um, but Jennifer Aniston, bitch, I'm on strike from you. <laughs> <laughs> you're over Jennifer Aniston. I am. Uh, you're sick of her. Uh, I am. You know who I'm sick of? Jada Pinkett. God, I'm, so t- I'm so tired of her. I used to like her so much. I'm so tired of her right now. I shouldn't say anything out loud because I used to work for her Oops. hairstylist. <laughs> her, hey, Nico. Her hairstylist. Hey, Nico. He's an icon. Legend. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... I but can she's do the gift that keeps on giving. Right? She gonna keep uh, like chlamydia, like, <laughs> like Lord, syphilis. Can we can we be cured from it though? Like chlamydia, can we cure it? Or her, her her family feels like she has to die <laughs> <laughs> first. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Thank you for being on the second. Thank you for guest co-hosting with me on this. Thank you so much for having two. me. You were gonna you're gonna be back on the second the next episode, but um, let's. We're going to go into our interview with a special guest. Uh, first guest on the Lynn Torius podcast is my favorite porn star, <laughs> my favorite comedian, my favorite host, my favorite human being ever, Sally Mullins. Yeah. Woo! Sally! <laughs> hey, hey, Lynn. Sally, How's it Sally. going? Sally. Thanks in the for the bell. Yeah, yeah, see? 
this this says um ring for wine ring for wine oh Sally. nice definitely i have Hi. pepper spray has yeah that. pepper spray <laughs> only, only that's a pretty girl problem only pretty girls walk around with pepper spray <laughs> Bullshit. I've Bullshit. never had to walk around with pepper spray in my life. It's never happened. Well, it's coming. Your day is you coming think so? soon. <laughs> you think it's coming? You think if I lost a hundred pounds, I'm gonna start needing to walk around with pepper spray? <laughs> you, you know, first of all, uh, I think you you're gonna need it no matter what, even if yeah. you gain weight. Um, yeah. and speaking of gaining weight, I was just actually thinking because I've been gaining weight recently and I was like, I wonder if I gained like a bunch of weight, like if I just like Bridget Jones did up, like maybe it would help my comedy, you know, or maybe <laughs> I could, I could, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe I could move to another category of adult too. And like, maybe I'd be more popular as like an adult oh. BBW star or something. I was like, I don't know. Like maybe it'd help, you know, I don't know. I was just but thinking you know, about it. But you know what? I don't think you have that body type. You're slender. So you well, know, when, you, when you gain weight, you just become curvier. You don't no, become, I, I don't. No, no, no. I just become pregnant. <laughs> Do you really? It's all in the belly yeah <laughs> sally just said adult star adult star so if you all don't know if you all don't know sally is an adult star she okay, is what is your adult star name what is your adult uh, star jamie name? foster but i don't consider myself a star i'm just like a lady who's done some porn <laughs> <laughs> jamie foster how did you come up with that name you know i like Jody Foster a lot and uh -huh. I liked that last name I thought it was cool and Jamie I sort of wanted something like a little bit androgynous and I liked uh the the what was it the bionic woman Jamie okay. Summers uh -huh. Jamie Summers but I thought like Summers you know is like a little too porny so I took Jody's last name and Jamie's first name nice Jamie Foster how long have you been an adult star well I started out as Claire Fonda and Claire I like Fonda. Jane Fonda. Yeah, I like Jamie Foster's Jane better, Fonda. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, that was for fetish, and that was mainly spanking. Uh huh. And that was like Y two K. Uh, still, still goes on. I still do spanking videos. But uh, Jamie Foster came up like 2012 because I wanted to do more hardcore stuff. And spanking people, a lot of them, they don't want porn. They want fetish. You know. So when you're spanking them, are you clothed? Do you wear clothes? What do you, what do you usually, usually really? I played like the mom or the boss or the teacher or the principal, you know, and I'm wearing like a suit or, you know, like, like nice dress business lady, mom, whatever. So yeah, usually I'm wearing clothes, but there are naked, naked spankings. Nice. And do you, wait, you say you still do that. You still, do I the still fetishes. do that sometimes. Yeah. Like I get paid to go to the Valley and play like the spanking mom or something but just not as much as it used to be i used to run a bunch of spanking websites and wow you know, yeah, spanking yeah. websites what's yeah. a spanking website what website <laughs> well, would that be the they're still going on my my name was uh you know like i said called claire fonda so claire fonda spanking is still like this big empire i, I just don't own it anymore and uh -huh. it's all kinds of websites like girls spanking girls girls spanking men women, women spanking men um like true spanking confessions all kinds of different websites sorority <laughs> wow Wait, so do you like doing it in real life do you like spanking in real life or you only do that for uh porn that was kind of the problem. Like mm. I like it, but I didn't love it. And I didn't really have the fetish. It was just kind of a fetish I took to naturally. Mm. Uh, I do like it. Being spanked is fun as long as it doesn't get too crazy. Yeah. Spanking people, I can kind of take or leave. Like that's a paycheck, you know? <laughs> Right. <laughs> like if you deserve it, let's do it, you know? <laughs> so when when you, okay, so as an adult star, um, do you find that it's harder? I know you probably get this question a lot, but is it harder? Are you still freaky in bed in real life or? Well, haven't had sex, uh, for <laughs> a while, like pre pandemic. I mean, right. like just for porn, I've had sex. 
Um, I don't know if I was that freaky. If I were freaky, it was more verbal. I talk mm. a lot, maybe a lot of dirty talk. Ooh. I was always really like into role plays, like definitely escaping the reality of whatever sexual situation I had going on and some kind of role play. Like I'm in jail and you're my warden and, you know, or, or like I'm your wife's friend or even pervier like stepdad daughter stuff like pervier Ooh. stuff so I really enjoyed that that was the thing I enjoyed the most about having sex and I'm really? talking about it in retrospect because it's been like Lynn like four years since I've really had sex with no, I... for like pleasure I mean but is it because is it because you haven't found anybody that you connect with or <clears throat> you just don't care for it anymore or what is it you know okay well the pandemic I mean, uh -huh. the pandemic was a lot of took a lot of sex away for a lot of us, but a lot of people lost so much more. So this yeah. is not a complaint. Shit happens, you know, yeah. <laughs> please. I mean, gosh, I'm just I'm so grateful, you know, uh, but I haven't. It was hard to date in the pandemic mm -hmm. and then menopause in the pandemic <laughs> and then moving, then moving to like a whole different place. And yeah. there just aren't that many people here. And, you know, there's like a lot of it's a lot of MAGA. It's like more MAGA than, and I really like mm. just don't want to fuck MAGA people right now. <laughs> like I'm not saying I won't over right? a few beers, but, but I'm also like drinking less and working more. I mean, there are a lot of factors, but yeah, mm. it hasn't happened. There, and then there's been a couple of guys who I've been like into it, but for whatever reason, it didn't happen. Like that maybe they threw a roadblock, like they started talking about other chicks or you know, just logistics. It's mainly like busy. Got a lot of pets. I live three hours outside of LA. You know, <laughs> Maybe the guys just started talking. They open their mouth and you're like, forget it. <laughs> People can definitely like talk their way out of being laid, you know? Damn. You know I mean, that. You have, but, oh, I know that. But you have so much going on, you know, in your life. You're a comedian. Um, a kick-ass comedian. You're really fucking funny. So are you, you. know what? You know what you are? You, you're an exception to every rule. That's what you are. Because I remember you saying like um, uh, comedians should, if you're a comedian and everybody likes you, or how do you say it? Like when you're a comedian, not everybody can't like you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If, if everybody, everybody likes, likes yeah. you. Yeah. This one really powerful man we used to be really close with in the industry. He said, if everyone likes your act, mm -hmm. you're not going to make it. Like mm. if you're that much of a crowd pleaser to where it's unanimous, there have to be a few people who either think you're not funny or you piss them off mm. or you just irritate them. I mean, there has to be like that little bit of talk. I mean, you see comedians, they do controversial things all the time in order yeah. to create buzz. So there has to be like that little bit of like, you know, discrepancy coming off you. I really believe that. Right. Oh, okay. So you meant as a comedian. Well, yeah, as yeah, a comedian, yeah, you push yeah, boundaries. Yeah. You push boundaries. You talk about sex work. You talk about porn. You talk about anything, everything, aging, being a cougar. Yeah, you know, it. I definitely, um, you know, I, I like to talk about my truths and make it personal. You know, I just... This this is weird. OK, Lynn, I, I don't know. I, I want to bring this up because it's like fresh mm -hmm. on my mind. But I noticed that on stage, I talk about a lot of things that are highly dysfunctional mm -hmm. or maybe like endanger me or people. And then everyone laughs. And then mm -hmm. off stage, you start talking about those things and people give you shit about it. And right. this morning I tweeted and I'm like, you can't have it both ways. <laughs> like we are a little crazy, you know, mm -hmm. so people kind of just have to say, well, you know, she's a comedian and I, yeah. you know, just hope she's okay. And I'm <laughs> there for her. There for if, you know, like we get each other and yeah. we kind of like we we just we just always have. So yeah, we've always been cool. We've always been able to talk. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do think that it has to be what you find funny. It can't be like what I think I can get away with. Like sometimes you have to work a joke and make it more palatable. Mm -hmm. But eventually it's about pushing through and owning it. And if you think it's funny, it's kind of like masturbation. It's got to be like what gets you off, you know? <laughs> True. Hey, kitty, who's meowing? It's got to be what matters to you. It's got to be what it's funny, but also what matters to you, what you find important, you know, to talk about. Yeah. Not just, it can't not just, just saying it because it's funny. Yeah. I can't. Hey, Lynn, hold on one second. I got a cat uh -huh. making a weird noise. Give me half a second. Got a cat. Sally rescues cats if anybody's. Um, interested in rescuing pets and cats 
Sally does that, reach out to her at Sally Mullins 818 on Instagram. She'll <laughs> rescue cats for you. The reason that cat was meowing loud is because he has cancer. <laughs> oh, oh. I Look mean, at that's... her. Look at you, Sally. You're hot with a big heart and everything. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> well, I think that, you know, like, okay, this is another thing that's weird about the desert, Lynn, is that uh -huh. some of the guys, they think I'm an angel. OK, uh -huh. like they, they think I'm from God because I help animals. And I explain to them that I'm just a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what we do. We can see outside of our own family and <laughs> our own country. And <laughs> that's hilarious. Is that in your stand up? I think it should be. That's hilarious. That's <laughs> funny. No, but what I wanted to, what, what I meant to say in the beginning is that you're exception to the rule because I didn't know you were talking about just comedians. Like people have to not like your act. Some people have to not like your act for you to really be a good comedian. But I'm saying you as a person, like I don't know one person who doesn't like you. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, Everybody that is likes weird. You. Everybody I likes you. You're not annoying. You know, you're like the oh. least annoying white lady in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Care? Oh, uh, I'm sure there's some people who, who uh, maybe we just don't know them. Just by comedians, I'm well liked. But I think that's the hosting thing. I think I I I experience a lot of people when they're at their most vulnerable, and mm. I bring them comfort. Yeah. So in that way, I am kind of an angel. <laughs> you are an angel. You are an angel. No, you really are. <laughs> But like everybody, I, I just don't know a single person that has anything against you. Like Sally, you're you're so likable that if my boyfriend had cheated on me with you, I'd probably forgive him. <laughs> that's good. That's cool. That's good. To I'd know. be like, that's well, pass for me. I know. <laughs> I'd be like, well, you know what? You know, I can't. You can't. What can I say? <laughs> like, you gotta let that go. You know, yeah, yeah, it's you know, Sally. It's fine. It's Sally. <laughs> and she hadn't been late in four years, and she's in the desert. <laughs> yeah you do doing her service no really that's just how likable and lovable you are I think in, in my opinion yeah that's I think but isn't it weird like we can't see it you know and I kind of think it's because I didn't feel like I was likable in my family so I went out of my way probably to be like you know, how can I be kind? Like what makes people like me? Like what, you know, growing up and then perfecting the art of being likable. I mean, I think like you're tremendously likable. You get away mm -hmm. with so much on stage and people <laughs> just automatically like and respect you. So it's the same thing. I, I hope guess. so. Like we learn how to survive, you know, but you know what? I'm more likable on stage than I am off stage though. You're likable <laughs> both ways. <laughs> No, I, I find you really, one thing that I love about you, and it really helps me out because we've worked together a lot, is yeah. you're easy to work with. Like I've yeah. hosted for you. I've seen you when you're under a lot of pressure, you know, by a club, you have a production going on and yeah. you're cool to all the talent. You're not yeah. like, I'm frazzled, uh, you know, <laughs> so, and I'm yeah. like, okay, Lynn's cool. I'll always yeah. do Lynn's on projects because they're cool projects and she's cool, you know? Yes. Everybody, thank you. That means a lot coming from you. No, it it really does. I mean, I I I'm like a duck on water. Like underneath, I'm pedaling really hard, but on the surface, I gotta act like, oh, you know, it's you know, yeah, everything's fine. Good. You know what I mean? That's producer. That's producer. You have you to. Know? You have to. I know. You're you're huh? Go stress ahead. stress spreads because stress spreads and you don't need you know and like as a host it can't be all about you you know you can't I mean when I get to the comedy store the last thing I want to do is really talk to people I just mm -hmm. want to get on that stage and mm -hmm. get that first laugh and now we're rolling and right. now I can be me but you have a million people in your face because they're freaked out about what they're going to have to do and so you have to be <laughs> like hey like look how chill I am and I'm going yeah. up there for a cold open so yeah. you guys it's going to be fun Fine, you know i know sally has to go up there when as a host when they're not drunk yet people are still walking in everyone they're they're giving their orders mm -hmm. the waitresses are talking loudly um or waiters are talking loudly so you have a tough job and but i the, uh huh go, go ahead. ahead sorry oh well, and i was gonna say like and you get the room ready for the comics like you get the room ready for the rest of us to it's have a good an it's set. a good service well yeah. you know hopefully i mean sometimes like i feel bad i'll be like don't worry this crowd will get better 
<laughs> I did what I could. I was not going to stay up there any longer nope. and run my light, but they will get better. But, you know, uh, I like that moment when they do click in and it kind of mm-hmm. reminds me of just all your life, like the struggle, the struggle mm-hmm. to get attention, the struggle to be seen because yeah, I'll be on stage servers right in front of me. People are walking in everybody's like distracted, putting their phones away. And then you feel that moment when they go, huh, bitch has jokes, you know? Yeah. And that's this greatest feeling. You just dig in then. I can't, I can't wait till you have your own residency in Las Vegas. Oh, that would be fun. Let's party. You know, that's- we need to do, <laughs> We, we need to do this. I mean, there's so many like cool buildings in Trona and uh, there's just people need something to do here. So you I never know. know what's going to happen. You never I know. know when I'm a millionaire, I'm going to give you your own residency in whatever town good. you want. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve it. But I know you got to get out of here. It's 12. It's oh, 12. Yeah. 12 you I do. Get out of here. We could always so, talk forever. We could talk forever. But I want you to t- um, the last thing I want you to tell is um. Anybody's listening, all the women, especially, you know, they want to get into comedy, sex work, adult industry, anything. What's you, what do you want to tell them? What do you want to say? Uh, Do it and dress how you want and rock your brand and make as much content as possible. And do not think I am too old. I am not pretty enough. I'm too short. I, you know, whatever the fuck you think, because it can everything that you feel is wrong about you for mainstream society can be so right for comedy and there's no better time just to be your own porn star and find your own following on only fans and let one feed into the other you know Aww. kind of thing like get the followers from your comedy to your porn vice versa <laughs> i know do it the way sally does it <laughs> no do really you, you make it work for you and you rock you rock your brand like you're just you you're just you <laughs> That's there's all no... I can do. I'm not, there's... you know, <laughs> but there's nobody else like you, you know, <laughs> well, we're, 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 we're going to continue this conversation we over are. a cocktail and, you know, sorry if I sometimes get excited <laughs> and interrupt you, but I like talking to you. We you love know. it. We're, we'll have you back on another episode. All right. My love. Thank you, Sally. Talk to you soon. Bye, Sally at <laughs> Sally Mullins 818 on Instagram and Jamie Foster on adult industry yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <only fans. laughs> bye, Lynn. bye sally <laughs> i hope you all enjoyed sally mullins as much as i enjoy her every single day just as much as Jalen enjoys her that's my mother <laughs> come back next week uh for more lynn Torius, more Jalen white more pop culture more everything just more of my world so do that thing you do like comment subscribe all the cool things kids do nowadays thank you so much and we will see you next sunday bye